<clears throat> hey everybody, so this is Rhino7 and welcome to a quick demo on how to navigate yourself around the software. Uh, first things first, when you actually open the software for the first time, you'll be welcomed with this window um, where it has your recent files and some news and some tips. And I recommend you guys go through and actually navigate your way around here. The uh, links to the blogs are often quite useful and the tips, um, little videos, again, sometimes are appropriate. Recent, open, and new. So when we make new files in Rhino, despite um, you know our current project being quite large, uh, we're going to use small objects and millimeters. I think that is quite a conventional approach. Yours might look a little bit different to this because I've set my background to be a darker grey. Um, we can work on that in another session. Uh, you've got a few striking differences to any other software that you've come across before. Um, hopefully you've all watched the Linda videos, but what we're going to be looking at here is a few more specific focused session um, tools and techniques for our um, introduction today. So what we've got here is four viewports. Um, you can navigate around each one by right clicking and moving your mouse. We'll pan and in this one over in the top right here, uh, right click and move it and mousing around will rotate or orbit, I should say, the uh, viewport. Um, if you want to pan the perspective, it is shift and click. Okay. So what we've got here in the bottom right corner is a little identifier of all the keys that I'm pressing. It doesn't unfortunately work on the mouse, but what we can do is uh, see how this works out because my mouse clicks are sometimes quite fundamental to Rhino. Uh, you will be required to grab a mouse, basically. A £2.50 mouse from your local supermarket will suffice. Uh, it will make your life a lot easier, um, in my experience. Uh, navigating around the interface so even if you are a bit of a whiz with your trackpad I do recommend a mouse uh, in order for you to get the best out of the software. Uh, three button mouse is uh, very typical these days left right and wheel so you can do the cool zooming in kind of thing. Um, okay so yeah this is this is it. Uh, you've got a grid um, fundamentally it is like AutoCAD um, you know, you've got a grid at the moment, this is set to millimetres, one, two, three, and you've got a red axis and a green axis, which is X and Y, and you've also got Z, which uh, goes up in three-dimensional space. Um, and yeah, it is, you know, let's get straight into it. Uh, you can turn the grid off and on by pressing F7 on the keyboard, which is sometimes quite pleasant to work without a grid. Um, or it might not be, it doesn't matter. We do use a, few, a lot of those function keys along the top of your keyboard. Maybe you've never pressed them before, unless it is for changing the volume or skipping a track, uh, but you will de be utilizing them occasionally um, in the next few weeks, uh, especially F10 and F11, which is control points off and on, or on and off. Uh, and uh, F7, as I say, is uh, turn the grid off and on. And I think, but the others probably do more as well, but I've got no idea because they're the only ones I ever press. So anyway, moving on. Let's try and keep this somewhat uh, short. Now, so what have we got? Um, let's try and understand this interface a little bit, shall we? It is looks pretty old school, really. Um, don't let it intimidate you, please, and um, we'll learn to love it together. Uh, four viewports, first of all. Uh, the way that I always describe this is to imagine you're driving a car. You have several windows to navigate your environment around you, and it is very much the same um, approach with Rhino. 90%, uh, 99% of my time I'm working in perspective, uh, but fundamentally I do use these other windows uh, when I need to, and we'll see how that uh, just happens organically and throughout the session. Um, let's see, so we've got file, boring, file open, save, um, always save. So I've just made this file, what I'm going to do now is save it. So save, give it something sensible, let's drop it on the, um, obviously I don't recommend this normally, put it on the desktop. Okay. 
Well, it is heaven, you know. Make sure you've got some good file management and uh, make sure that's nested away accordingly in your unit folder. Um, so save it, because now we've saved it, Rhino will do automatic saves. So if you crash, um, you know, chances are you might get your work back if you've saved it from the outset. Uh, insert and import. Now this is a quite useful import because if you go to the bottom here, uh, you can see that um, you've got loads of file types to choose from, you know, tons and tons and tons. Um, so if you were to go to uh, any of these, you can see uh, you've got um, DWG, DXF, you have got Illustrator files, FBX, we'll be using FBX, OBJ, we'll use OBJ quite a lot, PDF, SketchUp, you can open a native SketchUp file. If you want to bring a Revit model in, you need to use the FBX, which is this motion builder.fbx. SolidWorks, you don't use that. STL, we'll be using STL a lot. So what I use in my workflow is STL, PDF, OBJ, AI, DWG, 3DM. Okay, so we use a lot of those. This is why I love Rhino. It's versatile. It can do so, so much. Import, export, same again. I don't have anything to export, but if I did have something to export, I could also export it in a range of file types. And you've got my uh, files that I might have used recently. And then we've got all these tools along here. Uh, it's kind of like Revit, I suppose. You've got the ribbon, uh, but instead of having ribbons, you've got uh, these tabs, uh, not too dissimilar. Uh, the thing that is really different about this, and um, maybe more modern software, let's say, with a modern interface on Windows at least, is that here you can use whatever tool you want, whenever you want. Whereas in, um, let's again compare it to Revit because that's what we're coming from, um, you know, some tools you won't be able to use unless you're in a position to use them. Okay, so you might not be able to click through some tools unless you've pressed the green tick and then it allows you to go and use some more tools. But this is just a, a complete sandbox, as they call it, complete free for all. Um, okay, so going ahead, we've got file edit. So you can do obviously things like cut paste, control X, control V, control C. Uh, you can do select. You've got loads of ways to select objects. Uh, select objects by color, you can select objects by size, you can select all the curves, you can select all the 3D shapes called surfaces or polysurfaces or meshes. You know, you can choose select by all sorts of things. Control points, we'll look at what control points mean later. Uh, but these are like anchors, I suppose, in Illustrator, if you've used Illustrator before. Groups, blocks, layers, join, trim, explode, rebuild. So again, maybe some of these components here are quite familiar to you because a lot of the tools are ubiquitous in 3D software, okay? Whether it being AutoCAD, 2D, or Revit, 3D, 3D Studio Max, 3D, SketchUp, 3D. You know, these are ubiquitous tools. So join, explode, trim, rebuild. View. Uh, views are, um, as I say, we've got four views. There's a default and um, you've got loads of different options. So at the moment, because I've been in perspective mode, that was the last one I clicked in, it's gone blue. Uh, if you go to view, you can change the rendering type of that viewport and that'll become a bit more apparent later as we go through. And then um, as we go along, we've got curve, which means a line basically, even though you might draw a straight line in Rhino, they're called curves. And you can see that you've got loads of curve creation tools at the top, lines, polylines, rectangles, polygons, circles, ellipses, blah, blah, blah. And then as you go down the list, you can start to edit those curves, extend, fillet, chamfer, offset. Yeah, just like in AutoCAD. Once you go from curve, you can go to surface and you can, uh, well, we'll look at that in a minute, it might be worth it just seeing what that looks like by playing around. A new tool here in Rhino 7, new to me as well, because Rhino 7 is brand new, uh, called SubD, Subdivide, we'll play around with those. Solid, Mesh, uh, Solid are things like the 3D shapes that you might be used to in SketchUp, okay? Boxes, pyramids, that kind of thing. Uh, mesh, all the dimensions that you might ever need. Uh, modification tools called Transform, Move, Copy, Rotate, Align, Orient, Array, you know, again, all the same things from AutoCAD. Um, and then you've got more analysis tools, 
uh, and Rhino is very good at making sure that your models are uh, safe for 3D printing, good for laser cutting, uh, good for having uh, a building being built in real life, uh, all those kind of things. Render modes. So this does a bit of rendering. Um, it's not a de facto visualization suite, uh, but every version does get better, uh, certainly at doing those interim renders between uh, clients and colleagues. So this uh, render mode here uh, does have a few options in here, materials, lights, that kind of a thing. Panels, you can change the viewport, it's very customizable, but 99, well, I use the default interface. I've used this software for like 15 years now, and I just use the same default interface, um, mostly because I'm showing people how to use it, and uh, this seems to work for me, so I don't need to worry about it. Uh, we've got this large white uh, rectangle, which is a uh, command line, just like in AutoCAD. So what I can do here is I can type commands. So all those things around here, all those objects in the tabs, <coughs> like I don't really use any of them. Most of the time I type in my commands. So if I want to type, uh, if I need a line, I'll just type in line and press enter and I'll draw my line. Easy peasy. Uh, if I want to draw another line, I've got a few ways I can do that. I can type the word line in again, that's nice. Um, or I can use the enter key and that will, as you can see, the command line has automatically started that command again. So it's the last command it will repeat. So start of line. Uh, or I can use the right click or right mouse button and that will do the same thing as enter. So right mouse button and enter is the same. Uh, in AutoCAD, when you drag from left to right, it does a different thing to dragging from right to left. So left to right will only select things that are fully encapsulated by that rectangle, whereas right to left will select everything that it intersects. Okay, so that's really useful if you just want to select a few objects uh, without necessarily having to go and click in. Um, you can do the drag from different directions. Really useful, you need to get used to doing that if you don't do that already in AutoCAD. Uh, a few other things to pay attention to here as well is that when you've got a cluster of shapes on the screen or maybe when you start to work in 3D, uh, you've got objects behind each other. When you go to click on one, uh, Rhino doesn't really know what you're trying to select. So in Revit, you would normally press tab. It uh, doesn't do anything here. Instead, you get this little dialog box that appears, which you generally gives you a good list of options to select. And you can go in and choose which one. Uh, sometimes you won't, it won't even show up on there because that's how helpful it is. So you just have to deselect. Usually I mash the escape key. If you don't press escape about 10 times every minute, um, you know, you're doing CAD wrong, uh, in my opinion, if you don't mash the CAD, uh, the escape key. Uh, so going down there, so yeah, make sure you use right click because it's the best. It's the quickest way to draw shapes over and over again, do lots of trims and things like that. Um, now... Again, you've got the most common tools in these sets, in the tabs. Uh, I rarely ever use them. Occasionally, when I'm actually doing a bit of uh, drafting, I might go in and set all my uh, view, my tools to be drafting, so I've got all the common commands. Uh, but it's pretty good at drafting, but it's still not as good as AutoCAD. You know, if you really want to go in and do annotations and things, um, you know, AutoCAD is, is the, the daddy when it comes to that. Uh, but things to pay attention to... Yeah, I don't know really, just don't use it. Uh, mesh tools, I did start to use that. But again, see how you get on, let me know. I generally use the standard view. Um, so in standard view tab, we've got new, we've got open, we've got save, we've got print, blah, 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 cut, copy, paste, undo. Now you'll notice here on undo, we've got this little black rectangle, or oh, sorry, little black triangle. And you'll notice that on a few of these tools around here is that you can click and drag. So you can click and hold. And it will give you a range of options of undo. Hover over it, undo, undo select, undo multiple, undo clear. If I go, say, to this cube, if I press and hold or click the little triangle, you'll see all these default options available for me there. Uh, going around... Um, we can pan. I would not orbit in the top, front or right. Only really ever orbit in perspective. If you 
mess this viewport up it was a bit of a pain to fix all right so you get this really weird quasi um, skewed viewport um, the way that I would fix that is just by clicking on the four viewports and that will fix it but it does mean you know you've got to move all your nav all your viewports around again which is a bit of a faff um, so yeah so let's go around here um, zoom just use the scroll wheel for goodness sakes um, zoom extents and zoom select now these are the two best tools in this toolbar okay they're the ones that I use the most so uh, you know you know when you're in AutoCAD and you've got all your work all over the place and it's massive uh, you can double click the top in the cube or the viewport name and it will kind of zoom extents it will zoom out and select everything in well, make everything visible in the scene so let me do that really quickly okay so I just did a little right click there so at the moment I've zoomed back in I can only see one shape if I left click on this zoom extents boom you know my top view is now zoomed out and everything is nicely uh, neatly um, aligned in there uh, if I right click on this icon I get the little pop-up to tell me that it's going to do zoom extents all viewports so sometimes when I'm getting a bit lost or confused or I don't know what's going on I'll just go up there and I'll right click zoom extent all viewport and conversely the one with the magnifying glass with the yellow selection is if I go and select an object I can left click and it will zoom select it or I can right click and it will zoom select all and uh, again, that is a tool that I use every five tools, every five functions. I'll just click an object and I'll go back to select. Um, and then if I want to go back out, I'll go in and right click all the viewports to extents, select an object, right click and zoom select. Okay, so I can focus on what I'm working on. Again, I'm sure that's the same as CAD uh, in some aspects. So going around here, um, you can use keyboard shortcuts. So I can do... Um, Z, I think. Does it zoom? Oh, that broke that. Yeah, don't use that. Um, I'm sure it's uh, ZS. Enter. Okay. Z select an object, ZS, right click, and it will go around. So ZS is obviously zoom selected. Um, is it ZE? Yeah, more like it. ZE will um, zoom extends. Yeah, and I'm right clicking. Oops. Easy mode. And again, I can just go around and press enter because it repeats the last command. So a few ways to do zoom and select. You don't even need to look up. You can just do it on the keyboard. Uh, that will get all the viewports back to where they should be, but I rarely ever click that unless I've ruined it. Um, um, don't know what I click there. Hide objects. Yeah, and he's gone. Okay, it's, hiding is often very useful, but it's a bit messy. Uh, the reason it's messy is because after you've hidden about ten objects, and then you go, oh, well, I need to go and uh, view it again. It's not like Revit where you can select which objects to go in and reveal. Uh, it's just going to bring them all back to the scene, and that can be a bit frustrating, uh, especially if they're mammoth and uh, you know they're in the way. So you have to go back and, and hide them all again. Uh, but in this tool, again, you've got the little drop-down menu. You can do show objects. Um, in fact, I, I don't even know. I never even clicked on here, really. Uh, sometimes I do um, swap hidden objects with visible, I think it is, or isolate objects. can't remember. So if I've selected this one and then I click on isolate objects, it'll hide everything except for the thing that I've selected. And that can be really handy because sometimes... Rhino is trying to be too clever with all of its options and you just want everything else to disappear apart from the thing you're working on. So by selecting it and then doing this tool here, which is isolate objects, it just hides everything else. And then, you know, 10 minutes later when you fix the problem, you can right click on the light bulb and it will show all. Okay, see how my little guy just reappeared in the bottom left corner there. Uh, you can lock geometry. Uh, he's actually gone. I wasn't expecting him to go. Where did he go? You can right click and unlock. Uh, but if you bring a CAD drawing in, you know, or a SketchUp file, you can select it and you can lock it and it will be there usually. You can see it. Um, the pie. Well, this is what we call uh, the pie. Um, it is the layer view. So you've got layers of the pie or layers of the cake, I suppose, is 
a nice bit of uh, Victoria sponge in some nice bright primary colours. And uh, as you can see, I'm going to drag that over. This has brought a new window up. So maybe if you guys have just been using Rhino for the first time today, um, that window will have been docked on the right hand side and it's always been there. And you're like, how come Ed's not got that? And I haven't. The reason that's not there is because I can drag that out um, and then get rid of it because you never, never even need it. Um, you don't need it until you do need it. And then sometimes you need it for that whole day. You know, because you're in there and you're organising your work and um, it's just the way the project goes, I suppose. Um, so looking at this, you've got um, the cake. You've got different tabs in here as well. Goodness me, loads of options. Cakes, layers. At the moment, I've got five layers default. All of them are visible. The one that I've got with a tick is the one that I'm on. So I currently I'm on the default layer and the material colour is uh, 000, which is black. And as you can see, I've got line types and I've got width. So it's kind of got similar languages to AutoCAD. Um, so what I can do here is uh, think about what layers I might want to put on. So instead of using that hide, which is useful occasionally, but can quite quickly trip you over, uh, we want to start using layers. So uh, sometimes I will make some shapes and geometries and I will then be like, right, you know what? I don't need them at the moment. I will, I will select them. And... I can't really do anything on this tab in the layers apart from understand what layers I've got. So I'm going to right, so left click on there, left click again with a little pause, and I'm going to call it, um, uh, what am I going to call it? Rects. Okay, for my rectangles. I think you can even right click on here and look at all these options you get. Uh, you can make sub layers, which I think are often quite useful. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. New sub layer. Yeah, so I could have big rec. To actually type and you know you could even go in there as, as well and go little rec okay so you know we can go in there and we can give them different colors by clicking on that thing and um, let's give that a nice green and let's give this one a nice magenta and as you can see the light bulbs on so everything's on at the moment so uh, what i need to do now is go into this um, color wheel which is properties and again i've also got that on the um, toolbar at the top here so now in this window i use here uh, it's just going to be basic rhino stuff but now what i'm going to do is select the rectangle and it's going to give me a bit of information i'm going to you can give it a name you know guys i've never ever put this much effort in uh, my file before but now I'm doing it it feels pretty good uh, I can change the layer so I've already made those layers and straight away you can go in big rec and this guy sorry, little rec he's gonna go in the little rec layer okay so now uh, you'll see that my objects are the same color as the layer and I can change that I can change the layer color I can put them black back to black um, don't know why I'd want to do that because ultimately, um, you know, um, you've given them a colour for a reason usually, and that's so you can differentiate them nice and quickly. So let's put them back to the layer. Uh, a few things we might want to check here is back in that layer mode. You know, I can do a few things with the visibility and the locking. So I can lock the whole layer. So now they are, I can't select them, but I can still use the geometry to snap endpoint to endpoint, yeah? So it's really useful, uh, but I uh, don't need that right now, I wanna unlock them. Uh, I can go and I can turn sub layers off or I can turn the whole layer off. Okay, so that's a nice bit of layer management for you. Uh, so especially as you go later on, uh, you might wanna use that. Also, if you do go in here and actually wanna start working on that layer straight away, you just have to make sure you go in layers and you choose the tick, okay? on whichever layer it is you want to draw. And then as you start making more geometries, you know, straight away, we've got uh, a smaller rectangle on the big rectangle sub layer. So nice and confusing there. Sorry, everybody. Uh, but yeah, layer management, uh, really useful. Or well, you've got even little icons, like new sub layers, move the layers hierarchy up and down. You can filter them by, gosh, there's just so much functionality here that I've never even explored. What else have we got? Uh, oh, shading modes. So as you can see, this is wireframe. So this is, let um, me draw a 3D cube. This is called wireframe. And you can start to see as I orbit that around, 
uh, in my views. You can see the top, the side, and this side. Uh, but you know, we're not in Ryan, we're not in wireframe land, are we? We're in 3D land. So uh, what I'm going to do here is um, track that over there. Do ZE enter. Stupid thing. Ah, trying to get too fancy for my own good. Uh huh. Uh, or ZS. Right click. There she is. Uh, but I don't want that. I want a nice uh, shaded view. So what I'm going to do now is, because I'm in the perspective mode uh, window, uh, you can see that I've got this drop-down menu and I can do shaded. And it makes it all sort of 3D-like, doesn't it? Loads to play with. Rendered. Nice bit of ambient occlusion here on the ground plane. I'm moving that in Z, as you can see, in my different viewports moving that up in space but for some reason it's uh, doing that uh, maybe if I make a copy you know now we can start to see the shadows coming through and playing around it was great um, I'll show you how to do that in a sec uh, ghosted ghosted's really great so if I go back to bringing the object back in ghosted means that you can sort of see this ghosted shape beneath it uh, really useful when our objects get crazy and we need to start deleting shapes on the inside X-ray, similar sort of thing. Technical. Look at that. Uh, probably quite confusing when your projects get quite big. So right now I've clicked art artistic, but it uh, takes a few seconds for that to render. Uh, the coarseness of that paper is a little bit too much. Uh, pen. You can do some cool stuff here. Straight away, it looks like I've uh, totally hand drawn this Arctic. I don't know what the difference is between Arctic and rendered. Uh, ray traced, uh, if any one of you was looking at the Carlos Mazan lecture earlier today uh, or Wednesday, depending on when you watch this. Um, you know, he talks a lot about V ray and ray tracing, so um, that's pretty much what that view is. So, rendered, there we go. You can use rendered. Uh, okay, so everything in this viewport here, well, all the viewports, um, thanks, Zoom. Uh, everything in these viewports um, require the graphics card to generate those pixels, to generate those images. So this software will run on things like a MacBook Air, uh, providing it's an Intel chip at the moment. Um, it will work on a Surface Pro. It will work on um, or whatever other software, or laptop kind of thing that they are. So crappy little laptops uh, are fine for this uh, until you start doing a million things and then it's going to die. OK, um, but that's just that's cat. I'm sure you've all experienced that in the last few months anyway. Um, you know, so I've got a desktop and I've got a graphics card and I've got a CPU that's amazing. And um, this stuff gets, you know, it's easy to navigate and move things around. Um, as we go along but do be aware that you can do this so far and then your machine will grind to a halt eventually uh, you can do render which is this blue sphere uh, and that's going to generate this um, but actually I hate that rendering um, and what we're going to look at later is different software to do renderings anyway and again all these machines that you guys are running now uh, unless it's a 1080p monitor which is very sad you should definitely get a new monitor if you've only got a 1080p monitor but if you do have a even 1080p monitor you can just do a screenshot okay so control shift s no that's wrong uh windows key shift s yeah there we go you know you can do a screenshot and in this screenshot you know you can do um yeah that's great you know, you can say everything you need to do. The resolution is actually pretty good. You can even drop that in a PowerPoint. You can drop that in your design report, you know, because the pixels that your screen is usually are so high res these days that it's fine, okay, uh, to just drop in a screenshot. And um, that is quite normal. Okay, so normally I actually use Ghosted. That's my preferred viewport, okay? because it's just like if I want to grab objects, it's dead easy to uh, grab those objects. So yeah, pan and orbit. So orbit is right click. If I want to move it uh, left and right, I can pan. Um, I do have a fancy mouse, maybe I'll plug that in later and we can look at that. 
Uh, okay, so let's make some shapes because I've been talking for ages and not even done anything yet. Um, oh no, I'm still not ready. You've got lights, uh, options. Uh, we can go in there, we can change things. So for example, if you wanted to change the background, see how my background here is this kind of blue-grey. Uh, actually, I want this darker grey because, you know, we all work at 3 o'clock in the morning. So uh, let's make that a bit easier for us. You can select the options, which is this little cog. Um, advanced, no, not advanced. Is it display? Where's display? Do, 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 do. Anybody see display? I can't see display. Appearance, colours. It's none of those. Where even is it? All right. So this is something to comment actually. Uh, Rhino has apparently over um, like 1,100 tools, 1,100 tools for you to use. All right, so imagine that's a toolbox. Imagine you've got all those tools laid out. That is a lot of tools. Um, around these, or even in these little nested uh, tabs, you know, you, they don't equal 1,000. All these little icons around here, you know. Even if you went around and added all these up, it wouldn't add a thousand. I, I believe there's about 300 that you can select. All the other tools, really conveniently, are hidden away behind the command line. Uh, so, for example, you have to kind of know the tools that you need to use in order to type them out. Uh, so it's a bit of a chicken egg scenario. You know, you've got to start somewhere, but if you can't find the button, you, can't, you don't even know the words. You know, so it's all completely new. Uh, but rest assured, 99% of the stuff that we're going to be doing is um, CAD stuff anyway, okay? So you, a lot of the language that you already know, you can just start typing in. So uh, for example, I'm going to do advanced display. And straight away, that's going to bring up... See, maybe it might have even been there. I don't know. I couldn't see it. Uh, you can do the little drop-down menu in view. Oh, maybe it's there. Maybe it was view. Display modes, drop-down, uh, shaded and I'm going to choose solid colour, uh, dark grey. Boom. Probably already had that. Uh, rendered. Background. Solid colour, or you could even do a nice gradient. Okay, so uh, don't want to do that because that looks gnarly. Let's have a dark grey at the top, and uh, it's kind of sea green effect. I can't quite see what it looks like until I press the button. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks good. You can personalise this. Uh, I would avoid anything yellow uh, because when you select objects they generally go yellow. I guess you could change those anyway. So um, I'd do advanced display again and just make sure that when you've got uh, ghosted is the one I wanted, isn't it? Background, solid colour, dark grey. It's a bit boring, doesn't it, compared to that gradient? Maybe I should bring the gradient back in. Anyway, I digress. Uh, what are we going to look at now? Uh, we can look at uh, making some shapes. Um, oh no, still, more things to look at the top. Loads of linear dimensions. All right, snap, snap. That rect is 2,319 mil. Awesome. The next one along here is grasshopper. We're going to look at grasshopper uh, soon. So you can look forward to that. And some help. What happens there? Takes you to the web. Quick tour. Oh, that would have saved me some time if you guys have looked at all that. Um, tells you what all the menus do. Create objects. That's a good idea. Curves. Freeform. Control point curve. Come on, just show me how to draw a line. And this is what we're going to do. A nice little video. Well, let's give that a go, shall we? Uh, that is called a curve. All right, so let's click on a curve. Do, 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 select or cancel. Points, polyline. Look at those different types of line you can draw. Uh, this curve, control point curve. Right, so this is like the video. Uh, apparently, if I look at the command line, this is another thing you need to pay attention to, is kind of checking up on the command line every now and again to make sure that everything is looking pretty good. And it actually gives you a few prompts. 
So if you don't really know what's happening, uh, check the command line. Start of curve. Well, let's go here. Next point. Ooh, next point, next point, next point, next point, next point. And then enter to close it. Look at that. So I can do uh, enter to do that command again. Uh, so this is um, a spline, I suppose. Uh, you get these in AutoCAD, don't you? It's in the little drop down menu on the curve or line tool. So straight away, I've got those available to us. Oh, I don't really know why I deleted those. Uh, but the thing is, though, when you click, select them, uh, you even see the little points that I clicked when I made that shape. Well, that's pretty cool. I wonder what happens if I click on that. Oh, I can click and drag. And I can modify that curve. Well, that's pretty exciting. Uh, what have I got actually here? This guy here, this green and red and the blue and the grid is called a gumball. And that gumball uh, is all the way at the very, 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 very bottom. And hopefully you can see that on the screen. Uh, it's a little blue uh, highlighted word there, gumball. If you click on that, um, it allows you to select the red axis and move it. And it will kind of do it orthographically, okay? Uh, rotate it, it will snap uh, with shift. Um, and if you go to the different views, you see that I can move it in Z. There's loads of things. There's this little tiny guy here, this little round thing that gives you the options. Um, you can align it to different things. You can set the snap angles. Uh, you can um, drag it and then maybe press Alt on the keyboard and it will make a duplicate. Okay, so that didn't come up on my little keyboard shortcut thing. Probably because I've got the mouse select, mouse click. But you can see it in the command line, you know. Uh, it says um, drag and press Alt to make a duplicate. Uh, a few other things you can do, I think if you press control and move it, you move the gumball accordingly. So you offset the gumball position. So when you rotate it, it's kind of offset from that axis. Uh, I think if you press shift, it doesn't do anything. Alt and shift doesn't really do anything. It just copies. Control and alt doesn't do anything. I'm looking for the extrude because Pretty sure I just did that accidentally a second ago. So yeah, you can make you can make a big, big mess here. Loads of undos. Look at all those undos. Beautiful. Um, that's just one curve. The other curve we've got here is called an interpolate point curve. Uh, and instead of using those points as like gravity to draw the line in, so like these are little gravity wells. Okay, so it's pulling the line towards the gravity. Uh, these actually have the curve when you draw it at least, intersect those points, which is really great if you're uh, tracing uh, an image that you've brought in. Um, talking of which, uh, if I go on, um, let's bring in a cat picture. All right, what's, uh, this guy looks pretty dopey. So there's that. Um, I want to bring the cat in Rhino. Uh, there's a command that you can find called picture frame. I think. Let's bring that back there. Desktop, desktop, desktop. Doesn't even see the cat as a flipping thing that I can use. What stupid format is this? A JFEF. I've never ever heard of a JFEF file. What is a JFEF file, guys? Stupid cat. It's a JPEG, right? Yeah, that's a bit more like it. Look at it, it's a bit mean. Um, save images. Yes, get lost, you stupid thing. Picture frame. Oh my days, come on.
Where is the cat? Not copy. JPEG. Goodness sakes. Cat. Picture frame. Desktop. Cat. Boom. Look at that. Lovely high res cat. Uh, the reason I brought that in is to show you these different curves, you know, so I can bring that object. Oh, when you brought an object in, lock it. I recommend locking it, okay? Um, use the second curve along, and, you know, we can really bring in, if you could actually flip and click in the right place, um, and you really get a good, tight fit, okay? So that could be quite useful. Especially maybe you're tracing some floor plans or something like that or whatever it is you guys are actually going to be doing uh, Where is that other oh, other curve default one? Um, isn't Isn't it or is it because that looks pretty good to me. So when you actually go in a straight line It's not too bad, but let's see what it looks like when you do the curves Fine, they're both exactly the same What a demonstration, hey? What a perfect demonstration. So unlock that, get rid of the cat, the stupid cat, uh, curves, circles. All right, how big's the circle? Um, click on it, drop it in, and you can choose the radius in the top here. So the radius, let's say, is gonna be 100. Turns out my geometries are massive at the moment. Um, let's see if I can bring that down. Uh, or I could change that to diameter. Uh, I can change it to two point, so I could go from the middle of the line to the middle of the line. I could change it to three point, so I could go from there to there to there. You know, depending on what kind of fitment you might need. So yeah, lots of options there to draw a circle. Uh, if you just press circle once, you can see that it's asking uh, for the center. So usually that's well, doesn't matter where it usually is, but it could be zero. So just type zero and enter, and then the diameter of uh, 100 for example that'll give you those measurements that you might need okay uh, rec's the same so rectangle is uh, first corner let's whack it on zero and enter and then you might want that to be uh, 150 by 250 and we are in millimeters okay so that's quite small that's about a5 isn't it or something um, in paper size again you can turn the grid off and on just for clarity maybe you want to do a screenshot so you can send it to someone you know whack that um, grid off and then uh, you can what was it window shift s take a lovely screenshot already on the clipboard send it off in an email okay um, so going ahead here uh, we've got a few different things we can play around with that rectangle again you can choose rounded um, you can obviously put a radius in there if you wanted to and then we can go into surfaces so Rhino is made up of a different types of geometry uh, first type of geometry is the curve okay so we've got um, a single line here and we've got a rectangle or a square or whatever okay and all these are, are four lines that have been joined together. So I can use this explode command. And you can see that in the command line it says exploded a curve into four segments. Okay, so that's just four lines. Easy peasy. Uh, I can rejoin those using this little jigsaw piece. Or I could type in join. And it asks me what I want to join. Uh, I could draw a couple of different lines. one line and another line. I could select them all and do J for join and that's all good. Now the reason that worked really well for me is because I've got my snap on uh, so maybe you guys need to make sure that you've got ends all the way at the bottom here at the bottom of the screen I've got this little word called grid snap nice and easy to see um, that will actually allow me to snap to the grid so 99.9% .9 of the time grid snap is fantastic and I use it all the time. Uh, occasionally I need to turn it off but very rarely. Uh, o snap 
for object snap is what you want to be using here. So if you go into object snap, uh, you can turn on end, mid, center, intersection. So center is a little bit douchey. So sometimes center is the best tool in the world and other times it's pretty douchey. It just takes over everything else. And you're like, what the hell center, get lost. So you have to go in here and turn it off and on quite frequently, I find. Uh, quad, um, quadrant of a circle, uh, tangency of a circle, tan, uh, vertex, useful for meshes, and uh, sometimes we use points. You know, so nine to, all of the time I have end, intersection, and midpoint on. Those three are the key fundamental ones. So again, just like AutoCAD. So maybe I want to draw uh, objects coming from the midpoint. Uh, I've also got this thing here called Smart Track, which is the next one along from OSNAP. Smart Track. That, uh, as you can see, if I bring the line tool back up, I can select the end point, and maybe I want to draw a line to the end of this edge here. So instead of just kind of guessing, it already puts it uh, planar and parallel, which is fantastic. Uh, but it also allows me to grab the actual length, so I can hover my cursor to the end, and I can see that text appear called end and I can draw that up and then I've got intersection on so that only works when you've got end and intersection on and then I can drop that down uh, there okay so I've got a couple of lines now and again just like AutoCAD if I want to trim I can get rid of this line so I can select uh, trim here on the left hand side select the cutting object which is that line press enter and then the object to trim is the object and press enter to finish that command off and then I can do J for join and then enter fantastic okay um, if I want to draw a circle in the center because I've got my center snap on I can just hover over the circumference okay and it will as you can see the point is dropped in the center the same for a circle so if I actually want to start a line like on a clock face uh, to draw a line in the center, you don't hover over the center point, you hover over the edge of the curve, okay, or the circle in this case. And then you can see that I can then left click for the start of the shape, and then I might want to drop that because I've got quadrant on, drop that there and press enter. So it's exactly the same as AutoCAD in that respect. I might want to actually start doing some surfaces now. So that's the curve. Uh, so selection of curves, it's straight lines and um, trims and splits and splits and trims. Uh, oh, I've scaled. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Uh, instead of just moving it with the arrows, um, you can grab the uh, little square on the end of the dashed line and do some uh, scaling. It's quite nice. We want to trim that away. I'm going to choose these there. Trim, I think, is a little bit tighter in AutoCAD, actually. And now I might need to join those. Okay. So a few things I can do now if I actually want those to become uh, surfaces, which uh, essentially are sheets of paper in software. Okay. So uh, the first thing I can use here is a plane. So I click on the plane. And uh, I can do four or I can, the minimum it has to be is three. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then enter. It can be four, and it will automatically finish that command for me. Um, and they're all flat, okay, just like you can see in this view here, completely flat to the plane. Uh, but I can, because it's cool and Rhino, uh, model that using right click. I can go endpoint, 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 and I can make that paper kind of contort around uh, existing geometries on the scene. Uh, this is a box, so that's a 3D shape. You can do proper measurements, so uh, let's say. 50, 50, 50, and that will give me x, y, z, 50, 50, 150, okay, and I can go back to that surface, 
and model some geometries that might fix these together. Oops. Yeah, we can start to model these things around where we need them to be. And what else have we got under here? So if I go underneath that, so underneath that plane, we've got loads of shapes here. I'm going to actually drag that window out. We're going to play around. So using my existing curves that I've drawn, get rid of that line, get rid of all this garbage. Um, we've got this guy here called the surface from planar curves. So yeah, he's under the plane. Um, you can type planar surface, uh, click on him and uh, or her and uh, select planar curves to build a surface so because these are flat i can choose the objects i can press enter and it will automatically put a surface in there for me how cool is that uh, same with these guys right click just repeat the last command to really quickly make those shapes uh, and then we start to get into some freeform surfacing which is really uh, where rhino starts to excel okay so uh, really you should all have a go at playing around making some surfaces from curves um, before I go into these surface creation tools I'll leave that under in the edge there so I'm reminded by it I'm actually going to go and make some of these primitives so I've made a box made loads of boxes um, using my grid snap a good exercise for you guys might be to uh, this is one of the level one exercises so using nothing but the gumball and some primitive shapes, can we play around and make ourselves a fortress, a little castle, a little medieval castle? Uh, so the first thing that we can do is, well, I'm just going to start with a cube. So I'll start from scratch. Let's start from absolute zero. And we'll use a few tools in here that's going to get the ball rolling with Rhino. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is get my cube, zero. And it's going to be um, 10 by 10 by 10. All right, so it's tiny. Select it and do ZS, right click. I'm going to select it. I'm going to use the red arrow, which is X. I'm going to press Alt on the keyboard once, and I'm going to just drag that across. So I've now got two, and I'm going to do that again on the green. Um, you know, so you could do that. Oh, it's actually really, really tiny. It's cute. Um, because I've got grid snap on, it's always going to be the same. I suppose I could have been a bit more accurate with that, couldn't I? I could have dragged that and typed in uh, 75. Oops. 75. Alt. Enter. And that will do a duplicate at 75 mil. So let's try that again. Green. Alt for duplicate. Let's try 100 and that will automatically move that 100 in that axis. I can also use the move tool over here. I can select my objects, press enter, and uh, I can go from the corner here, end, and I might want to drop that on the top of there. And once again, I think I can press the, oh, I can't press alt when I move. Okay, so I'm going to scrap that. So now what I want to do is, um, what do I want to do? I want to build some walls for my tower, okay? So what I can do here is use the, uh, the cube again. I'm going to go in from the end. And I'm going to move my mouse around. And I'm going to go into the midpoint of this guy. So I've got my mid snap on. I've gone and hovered around the middle. And it's gone. Yep, that's no problem. And I also want to go half high. So I'm going to choose the midpoint of that cube. And um, I need to copy and paste, don't I? So I need to copy it. I want it exactly uh, mirrored, I suppose. I could use a mirror, couldn't I? So let's imagine there's a mirror here, and that's going to just over there. So let's type in mirror. I've got no idea where mirror is. Uh, but I do know that if I go from the point there to the point there, it's going to automatically give me the mid. And I can just click that down. So this might be worth me playing around with a little bit. And the same again for uh, this guy. Might be quicker just to draw the damn thing. Cool. Okay, so now the few things we're going to need is a little doorway in here. It's a very low-key 
very casual, maybe a bit more of a sandpit castle than an actual fortification. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is draw a little doorway. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, uh, two ways I can do that. I can, because it's tiny, isn't it? It's teeny, teeny, teeny. Um, one, two, three, four, five. It's only five high. I'm going to draw uh, three wide by two high. A little rectangle in my front view. It's sort of aligned. And I'm going to draw a little circle from the middle to the end. And I'm going to do a little trim. Trimmy, trim, trim. And so to finish that off. And then do, I'm going to do a join. So it's one shape. Okay, so now I've got one shape because I've joined those two shapes together. Uh, what I can do now is uh, punch a hole through here. So unlike SketchUp, where I'd be able to then go click on there and then delete the shape, I've actually got to do an extrusion and make a 3D object all the way through. Uh, so this is what's really quite powerful with Rhino, is that um, you can make your 2D shapes and turn them into 3D shapes. So, um, well, I say that's powerful with Rhino, Every software that works in 3D can do that, so uh, that's just something to get used to if you've not done that before. So that's, uh, I don't know if you saw that, didn't even, even think about it. I selected my um, curve and did extrude. And I've got loads, so I've got all these options, extrude. So extract, because it doesn't know if I've finished extrude. So E-X-T-R-U, extrude curve, Extrude curve along a curve, extrude curve tapered, extrude curve to a point, and then I can extrude meshes, surfaces. I can do all sorts of things. So it's really worth checking out what those uh, tool tips are. I'm going to do an extrude curve, and it does it uh, planar. Okay, so it's going to, or orthographically, I should say, it's going to punch that that way for me. Make sure it's intersecting. Sometimes, if it's not intersecting, I'll just grab the scale and I'll drag it like that. Uh, but I'd want to make sure that this is actually in the centre of that line. So sometimes when it's closed, it can be quite tricky. So I move it all the way out of the way. Let's get rid of him. I'm going to use the move tool from the mid to the mid. Okay, and then just make sure that's over there to be completely intersecting. And 10 points if you know the tool to get rid of this. Okay, uh, that tool is called a Boolean Difference. You can find it by these two spheres. Um, what I'm going to do is a second tool along called Difference. Subtract from the wall. Press Enter. Subtract with the door. Press Enter. And there she is. She's gone. Uh, you can also, if I undo that and run the command again by pressing Enter. Subtract from the wall. You can choose Delete Input. No. Just click on it. And uh, that means that you've still got that object. Sometimes you want to keep the object, so you just want to punch it out. And as you can see, that's really quite useful when it comes to actually getting some technical drawings, maybe a bit of an exploded diagram. Uh, yeah, so you can do all sorts of things here. Um, you know, I could draw a little cube here and do one by one. And I could do a array in the X axis. Just type it in. Press Enter. X direction, one. No, maybe I want five. Y direction one, Z direction one. First reference point, so the bottom left corner. And, uh, oh, I don't know how to do any measuring. Yeah, so you can play around with that. So I made those cubes 10. Guess I didn't. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, I did. I just don't know how to space it. Uh, I think I can probably do an array along a curve. Array curve, array linear. Let's see what that means. Number of items, five. Reference points. There. Oh, no, I don't want that either. So basically, I don't even know how to do an array. If you guys can do an array, take a screenshot, paste it in Teams, find me an email, let me know. Another thing I could do here, I suppose, with that uh, archway is I could do an array polar, polar array. Um, let's try a different shape. What could we do instead? Uh, let's go back a few. Hmm. 
Hmm. I was on a tangent then. Right, so I'm going to... I want a door on each one of these walls. Uh, the way that I'm going to do that is called an array P. Array polar. So the centre is going to be the centre of my geometry of my object. Um, so I've basically used smart track there and hovered over the midpoints of the two front and back walls. Could have been the side walls, doesn't really matter. And then I've hovered over the middle to find the midpoint. The number of items, I'm going to choose four. And the angle to fill is going to be 360. And you can see that I've now got a couple of those created. And I can press enter. I could even go in here and I could change that to, like, say, eight um, or you know, 16. But I don't want that many. I just want four. Press enter. And then I can do a Boolean uh, difference on all of those. I should have deleted it. Okay. Um, let's try and figure out this stupid thing. I suppose I should have made my walls 11 if I wanted five evenly spaced. Um, what are these things called? I'm going to pretend I don't know. But instead I'm just going to drag them around and copy them. And then just drop one randomly, not quite in the centre, like uh, some kind of philistine. So what I'm going to do now is actually want those shapes to be joined onto these shapes. And I can do that by doing a boolean. So that is the first option here. Boolean union. Sorry, boolean union. Select the shapes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Press enter when done. Uh, visually, it's changed its appearance, um, but they're all now one shape. So that's a nice bit of geometry that we can 3D print. Uh, I don't really like this castle. I think this doesn't look too good. What other 3D shapes can I use? Let's use a pyramid. Um, center. don't want the center. So you're going to get used to using the smart track and int. Number of sides, I want four. Drop it on there. Look at that. That's a bit more like it. Uh, maybe I want to copy and paste these over on each one. So I can do copy, which is this tool over on the left hand side. Or you could type it over. And because I've got end on, I can go end, 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 and then enter. So I have made a bit of a mess here, but it's okay. I'm going to select everything and I'm going to do Boolean. And now all of those shapes have turned into one which is pretty exciting. Um, what else could I do? Um, we could do a flag, okay? How about we do a flag? Because the flag is going to bring us neatly into the next set of tools, which is, well, what have we looked at so far? We've looked at curves. We've looked at solid objects. Uh, we've looked at copy. We've looked at trim. We've looked at Boolean, union, and difference. We've looked at array. We've looked at array polar. Uh, we've not really looked at array in 3D, so what I can do is, let me just, for the sakes of argument, to make some little cubes. I could do array um, 10 in X, 10 in Y, 10 in Z. So that's the spacing for that, and then maybe the spacing for this is going to be there. And you can see how um, arrays work really quite fluidly here. Uh, I could change that to 20. It starts to look pretty trippy. Um, you can change the spacing to 2. A bit denser. Not said direction. Z spacing 2. X spacing two, I think I did three. Yeah, so then we can press enter to completely finish that off. And uh, you can see quite quickly we've got these uh, regimented geometries coming through, uh, which is quite a fun little exercise for you to play around with array, because it can be a bit tricky sometimes getting the ordering correct. Um, so yeah, back to this flag. So I'm going to need a little flagpole first of all. So first thing I'm going to do is drop a normal line from the end, we'll use a different view, and it's going to go 10. And enter. And what I can do here is I can use a pipe command. A diameter of, let's say, 1. 
That's a bit monstrous, isn't it? 0 0.5, 0 0.5, enter. Uh, might just need to stretch that out a bit. Could have used a cylinder, chose to use a pipe. Uh, again, pipe works really neatly when I'm doing those more organic curves. If I could spell, if I could type. So I could do 10 on one edge and three on the bottom edge. And we get this cool uh, pipe shape. Is it parametric? No. So once you've drawn it, you aren't able to edit it. Uh, looks like a bit of a horn. Could go nicely with my castle. Um, was purely accidental and again you can do that in 3D so I could select that shape select the end point bring that up in Z you can see in my different views and I can still do a pipe uh, 5 to 1 okay got some cool stuff happening there uh, but now what I need to do is a flag so if you recall going on to a, a lovely English beach, uh, going to the little toy gift shop that they always have, trying to sell you tats, you'll be going uh, and buying a set of paper flags for your sand castles. And they pretty much look like that. And they've got a little graphic on there of, I don't know, some nationalistic uh, reminder of where you are. Um, but, you know, maybe uh, our castle has a little bit more vibrancy about it. And... Um, in order to actually use the um, tools that we want to explore, we want to go and play around with um, a wavy flag. Um, again, maybe you guys have played around with Lego in the past and we want to use um, a little castle flag that we might have got in our Lego set. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna draw it out in a curve. Just gonna really accentu accentuate that curve. Maybe even delete one of those points because it was a bit messy. Too many points. And um, what I'm going to do now is it is pretty ginormous actually. Maybe I should scale that down a bit. Okay, it's a bit more proportional. Very big flag still. Um, I can make that 3D, which is going to be pretty exciting. I can extrude that command and I'm going to do that uh, 10 and enter um, bring that on instead move it from the top to there look at that a bit more like it isn't it uh, but you know maybe we also want a um, cutout in this axis as well. So what I can do is use a different curve. As you can see, when I'm drawing this here, I'm actually extending that curve beyond the boundary. It has to at least touch the edge or extend beyond it. Otherwise, the next action won't work. And uh, what I can do here as well is do a little cut. So this is a trim. We're selecting the cutting objects and the objects to trim is gonna be the additional part of that flag. And I'm making sure that I'm actually in this correct view in order to get the cuts where I need them. And this can be quite tricky. So there you go, you've got this awesome looking wavy flag. Um, now bear in mind obviously that I'm making a stupid example, but maybe you want to be, um, you know, bringing this in as part of your project in a different approach, you know, it doesn't have to be a flag. Uh, one thing we can do here though, is utilize that cat image again. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is bring in my properties. I can now go into the material this tube of paint and I can do the drop down menu make a new material custom uh, cat flag I'm not going to bother with the color yeah maybe I'll use the color I'm not going to use green because that's the color of the viewport isn't it 
There we go. So we can give it some basic color uh, just by giving the material, this tube of paint, custom flat, custom material, uh, give it a color, give it a bit of glossiness or reflectivity or even transparency. So you can have a translucent flag. Actually, I'm interested right now in this uh, texture. There he is. Fantastic. I'm going to shaded, it won't appear. Okay, it will only be visible in the rendered viewport. So I leave that on there as a bit of a gotcha to be reminding me that I've got a cute stupid cat um, as my material. Might be worth playing around with that. And then what do we normally look at here? Um, okay, now we can look at some more maybe freeform shapes. Um, so you know, so I've got those curves. Let's get rid of that. Um, I can drag that up, press Alt. Um, again, you saw that I extruded it, but I could also loft. Hello, FT. Enter. Um, that's fine. What else could we do? Grab those same curves. I'm going to rotate this around 180. And I'll loft again. Okay. Maybe I want my own curve to go in here. I don't want it to be a straight line. Or maybe what I'll do actually is play around with that loft again once more. Rotate that back. And see what happens. One, two, three. Try and make sure you select the loft in the same sort of position. Even then, it still didn't work. So sometimes your lofts can do this real, really weird twisted thing. You might need to do here the called the align curve. And you can see I've got a crisscross. Just drop the point on the edge of a line. Just play around really until it starts to work. And you can see that I've got a few different loft options. It's fitting the surface through, uh, it's got a free form surface through the curves. Um, you can do loose, it's nice and cash. Uh, you can do tight. Uh, you could do straight sections, a few options here. Uh, loft is really great. Go back to having two curves which are slightly different. Uh, but what I'm going to do now, instead of having a straight line that's then lofted through the rails, I'm actually going to do something called a sweep. So a sweep one allows me to, let's see if I put a straight line in there, it's going to do a similar thing. So sweep one. Um, select rail. Select cross section curve. Oh no, I did it wrong. Okay, so that will do it like, like an extrusion in that case. Uh, but it means that maybe I could select um, oh, the point. And do sweep one again. Just press enter. Okay, so it will do some stuff. Uh, this is pretty gnarly. Don't try and avoid that if you can. Um, sweep two allows us to have a curve that uses two rails. One, two cross-section curve and then press enter so that just looks like a loft doesn't it but what's the benefit of this is if I then go and add a control point uh, which I think is this one insert a control point put it in the middle and move that around no, that's pretty disgusting I'll just draw a new curve All right, so I've drawn it here. It doesn't look too bad, but over here, that's a little bit extreme. I can select that curve and select that control point and bring it back over here because it doesn't seem to be behaving too greatly. Uh, I can rotate the curve around this edge. So it's a bit more 90 degrees to the rails. 
I guess I'm in the middle of nowhere really when it comes to modeling this. And what I'm going to do now is to get it to sweep along these two shapes. One, two, my rails, cross section curve, enter. And there we go, straight away. Got a fantastic organic shape. Um, if I want to do something cool here, um, what axis am I in? There we go. Uh, move that along a bit. I'm going to do that again, uh, but instead of that curve there, I'm going to copy and paste it. And I've moved it. Copy and paste. Um, and maybe get that control point to go this way. I wonder what's going to happen. Sweep two, enter. First rail, one, two. One, two, cross section curve. So I could actually select more than one cross section curve. Yeah, so that did it for me, didn't it? That looked different. One, two. Um, what I can do now is I can actually give these guys a bit of thickness. So I can 3D print them or I can put them in my renderings. Um, called offset surface. I get these arrows which indicate which side I want the surface to def reflect. So uh, I could do the arrows here. Uh, flip. Okay, see so it's a, at the top here, flip. Enter. And what I did do actually was something stupid there. So I should have just continued uh, to do a offset surface. Look at the arrows. I can always flip them in the command. That's what I want to do. Command, set the command line. You can choose a distance. So I'm working with maybe um, an object. So let's see what one is. There we go. It's already made that 3D. Let's go into rendered. We've got these awesome freeform curves coming through. Okay. Let's try offset surface again. Try uh, three. Okay, a little bit chunkier. We've got some kind of crazy arc going through there. So, if you wanted to actually make that flat, um, what I would do is uh, draw a giant plane, bring it up so it intersects, and then in this view, I would trim. And then a few ways we can do is now we've got a hole. I can use a command here called cap, C-A-P, and it will make that shape 3D again, uh, solid. Let's see what materials we can put on there. Let's make it a nice gem. A ruby. looking pretty good run button put a spotlight in there I don't even know that scene um, okay so I'm going to take that light out uh, what else can we look at so that's kind of the extrusions and the sweeps um, we were looking at this with a student earlier so I was taking these uh, let's try and delete those make some blobs control point curves so I've made one two three four five six points there I'm going to copy and paste them across uh, this one I'm going to extend the scale and as you can see um, oh they've gone underneath the clipping plane so let's bring them up a bit there we go so I've got three now, and what I can do here is I can loft these. One, two, three. And I've got this awesome curve, awesome shape. Um, and I can do a closed loft. So actually it goes back in on itself. Look, can you see that? Um, uh, 
Um, okay. Or you can just have it as a shell. Um, loose. Or tighter. If I move that curve, nothing happens. Okay, so it's that's it. Once you've made it, you've made it. Uh, yeah, these look pretty exciting, don't they? Uh, what else can we look at there? Uh, I could have also used the loft, but I could have dropped in a point. So if I can, can the center work? No, so center doesn't work on these random shapes, but it sort of looks like that. I'm going to bring the point out and copy the point to the back here. I'm going to do loft. Uh, I can do point. Turn points on that one. Curves, two, three, four, point, click. Press enter. There we go. And we've kind of got it to attach to those. So if I do loose, if I do... I was kind of hoping not to have those points quite as pointy. Uh, so I can try that one again, but bring them in a bit more to that edge. Look at that. Um, I think we could try one more thing. I'm still not happy. Uh, there's an icon here down at the bottom called Record History. So what I can do now is when I do this, uh, sorry, click it again. I'm going to do Loft once again. P for Point. Enter. So with the record history on, I should be able to select that. Ah, oh, it didn't work. Scumbag. Okay, so it works on the curvature by having record history on. And you can even loft with curves that aren't planar, which is quite exciting. So you can have quite a lot of fun with these. Uh, if you want to make some kind of pebble shapes or domes or interactive play shapes or um, inflatables perhaps I think that might be it really for this um, oops what I can do is um, let's have a quick look at undoing that because I want to keep this shape um, play around with oh, my microphone's moving around on its own stay still um, let's get rid of those and bring this to the front. Uh, turning this into uh, some kind of object that we might want to use. Uh, so what I would normally do is bring in a giant plane as a ground, just to kind of situate it. It's pretty cool. Um, maybe we want to trim that off with a curve. Uh, trim that. I might want to do a fillet uh, offset surface again. Flip the direction. F two. Enter. Okay, so we've got a thickness now, which might be quite useful if I want to do some renderings. Um, what else would we look at? Um, maybe dropping some curves in there. What I can do here, you know, is select that. It's where it gets a bit tricky, sort of moving things around like that. You can go in and select the um, end points usually. It's not normally as faffy as that. Why is it moving and extruding? All right, so they're sort of there. I could pipe those. 
um, three, I guess. It's a little bit thin. Um, doesn't look too good, does it? If I could ray along a curve, can I um, let's see array along curve? So it objects to array. Let's do this one. Path curve. I'm going to choose the edge of this surface. Items. Let's choose six. Mm, something happened. I can't remember which ones were mine and which ones were there. Yeah, I think it was that. Yeah, it just kind of gives a mess about, really, isn't it? Um, Yeah, boom, look at that, fantastic. Let's use that as our uh, output for the day. You know, just have a bit of play from curves to surfaces to solids to an exploration of all of them all together at the same time. Um, uh, yeah, let's see what you guys can uh, bring up to the session on the Tuesday. Save. And that's it, isn't it? Easy mode. No, it's not it. What could we do? Uh, could we make 2D? That's the best thing. Let's, uh, I can't stop, can I? Trim, trim, trim. Let's get rid of those, because I don't want those in the way. Um, fantastic command here could make 2D. Don't really need that. Enter. Uh, we could do third angle. Don't want hidden lines. Do want silhouette. Do want it grouped. Uh, let's see what happens. Look at that. It's even major technical drawings. How cool is that? Um, flipping. Cool, huh? Uh, what else do we need to look at? I think that's, that should be it, really. That really should probably be it. It's getting late now. So uh, enjoy your explorations with Rhino. Um, the other great thing about it is it costs a thousand quid. They do a student version for 200 quid. You know, AutoCAD is 4,000 quid, or it's probably a license fee now. So yeah, I encourage you all to use this software. It's the best. All right.